Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to the Headspace Podcast. It is episode 33, and it is your boy, HSR. And it is your boy, Chris Chrome. And unfortunately, Damon couldn't be with us tonight. She had a family emergency, and, you know, sometimes you just got to go. Family first, man. Family first. Right. You know, this comes after. Um, on that note, Soda Streams, tonight, uh, I'll be rocking this cola with some lemon with some lime. He made it a statement to make that. It was true. Let's just take a sip. <coughs> mm. And I have some root beer. Classical just root beer. So root Keep beer. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. It's the brown bottle, not the other bottle, because there's multiple options. Soda Stream, truly delightful. You should buy yourself one and then let them know, you know, we sent you. And then they'll be like, who the fuck are these people? And we'll get there. Yep, yep, yep. On that note... Chris, why don't you tell us who we are reviewing today, what album it is? Well, for this week's Headspace, we decided to go with DJ Khaled's brand new, brand new album Another called one. Grateful. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> what we went with today. Oh my gosh, I... I it's just so hard to take Khaled seriously. It's it's he's always been the same, and you know what? I kind of enjoyed this because it brought me back to like a little bit of a nostalgic feeling. DJ Khaled's always had all the multiple rappers just come together and have fun, and that's what it is. Right. So this album is unlike anything we've reviewed thus far because it's not really like an artist's vision. It's DJ Khaled trying okay. to put together okay. the best hits he possibly fucking has. Exactly. Had. That's that's what I want to clarify. So I don't know if you did this, okay? But for me, the way I looked at this album and the way I kind of graded it was each song is sort of kind of individual. Yep. Nothing connects. Oh, that's not true. There were like two or three songs that connected. Um, okay, DJ Khaled, how long have you known about the guy? So... I know DJ Khaled with, like, All I Do Is Win, um, yeah. We Take It Over, We The Best. Like, back back in high school, how come those tracks were out? 2007 was when we were taking over, so then. All right. Um, yeah, I I, did, I only really realized who or what he was with All I Do Is Win because I remember a great moment in a club in Jerusalem. And uh, since then, I just cared more about his Snapchat and his... Um, Otherwise, like, the, the meme he did with another one. Like, that shit I've cared about more than his music. Well, is it really a meme, or is it just people made it into a meme? Like, I don't think he did it. He, he says it. I think it. he did it on purpose. This dude knows social media. That's why I yelled out, lion. These are things he's created. Because hashtag major key. I mean, honestly, the dude's ridiculous. I, uh... I can't hate on his music. What he does is he's a DJ. He's DJ Khaled. He comes out, he got to make party smashes, and the fact that he well, puts together original mixes. There's a little, I, I want to question that a little bit. Is he still DJing? No, not in the conventional sense of spinning tables, but it's more that he's the behind the scenes guy. Like, he's not here to rap, he's not here to drop bars. This album is the songs he made mm -hmm. with the people he made them with. Showing that he can get the best people together to make banger songs. Right. So from that, it's like the opposite of like, whereas the rapper might be trying to create the dope ass project about this image and one okay. of the concepts okay. we've seen. So yeah, and then, then all right, let's like let's talk about this fucking album, Grateful. Um, holy what, shit! It's, what did you think of the cover? Um, honestly. It's not just the cover, it's the cover, the executive producer, the entire media plan. The, I mean, we'll I mean, get to Asad, that. <laughs> what is it? Ashan, Asad, no, Asan or something Ash, like that? It's Asad. Asad, um, Kala, fuck. Asad Khaled is basically the focus of this album's cover art. It's, just, it's, I find it that it, this album is dedicated to his kid. Um, and in a way, I kind of felt like it's his kid's resume before his kid grows up. Well, that's kind of part of what he's doing. He's giving him, like, executive producer credits as a fucking baby. Apparently, he's gone as far as to say shit like, we would play the songs, and when he would giggle, we knew it meant it was this kind of song. And when he'd stay quiet, we knew it meant it was this. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Kyle, you're reaching. Anyway, so his son is an executive producer on the album and is the cover art and... Is that and poster child for the entire fame streak he's on? 
and uh, honestly grateful. He's grateful he has his son. Yeah. And yeah. he's grateful for life. And that is the other half of like the media campaign he's been running. It's been like another one, you know, just go out there and get it and then be grateful. Nature's beautiful and shit. Right. Just be like humble about it. Just don't. But that, that's, in a that's, way, it's kind of like accept. It, be grateful for what you have at the moment, you know, for what you've achieved. Don't, don't, you'll you'll achieve what you have to achieve. Just accept what you have now and be happy for what you have now. Well, trying to bag major keys and stuff. Anyway, let's talk about right. this album. This twenty-three song, fucking 90, 90 minutes. This is possibly the longest album we may have reviewed on this, except maybe the Tupac one. This ranks as one. Well, of the Tupac's longest. on Classic Quest. Still, just for the channel, man, this oh. is like ranking fucking ridiculously long. So let's jump into intro. I'm so grateful. Um, so this starts off with literal birds and shit chirping and whatnot. Right? It's, it's such a peaceful kind of like forest foresty type scenario and some ch -ch 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 kind of drums kick in and the beat sort of starts to, to fade in and then our featured guest of this track sizzla appears and starts kind of saying stuff and honestly the whole song is about how grateful he is how appreciative he is of different things it's like accepting and be like like i was saying a little earlier being happy and grateful for where they are now and DJ Khaled's all like, I love my child. I love. Oh, first he's like, another one. We the best. And that kind of shit. Well, and I mean, hold on. He, he has to say those things. They are his shout outs. I, I mean, I don't care. It doesn't make it less ridiculous. Okay. It's funny. Okay. okay. That's half the reason I wanted to review this album was just so that I could be like, another one. Like, that's half the reason for me, at least. Um, Sizzle sounded okay. I liked him on the verses, I liked him on that little intro thing. But then we got to the chorus, and man's get so high pitched. Yeah, right? that was a little off for me. I was like, um, what? What are you doing? I just don't feel like he hit the notes, or that whatever effect they added to him, something about it didn't exactly sit right. With you think maybe me. it was natural? I think maybe it could have been a little natural, just wow. just to give it that like that like authentic, grateful feeling, you know? Perhaps I just didn't enjoy the sounds of it. And then Khaled's speech comes in, and we find out right off the jump he loves his son. That was something I noticed in the first track. He, he had to say it, and he, his little speech. And it's like you realize, oh, right, this is a DJ Khaled album, right? This isn't like he's on somebody else's verse, and it's right. kind of weird that he's saying all this shit. Well, no, he's never really on a verse. He produced the tracks, usually. No, I've seen a dude as a featured artist comes in, and he's just like, we the bet, and he just says shit sometimes. So in this case, you just realize nobody can stop him. He can say whatever he wants on this one. He can interrupt songs wherever he wants. And look, I'm not saying it's like terrible what he did because, you know, he's kind of prefacing this album. But I feel like you got this hype track with Sizzla going and then DJ Khaled talks for like, you know, 30 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever it is. And then right back into Sizzla and the great outro and shit. And you're just like, Honestly, if you took Khaled out of this, what, it would be like a perfect track. I feel like maybe put Khaled at the end because the whole thing is about Khaled praising his kid and like being grateful that he's got his boy and, you know, happy yeah, and yeah. joyful. It's a really positive song. But not only that, it's like it's uh, the song itself. Objectively, forget Khaled's message. The song itself is actually really cool. It's a very positive message about being grateful right, right, and being right. happy and be positive and motivated and continue and all that fun stuff. But take Khaled's message and just group it together and put it at the end, I think it would be a little bit better. Yes. Or at least, no, nah, not even at the front. Fuck, I put it at the end. No, because the thing is that it's in the middle, and he, I get that he did it. It's chopped up, get, first of all. It's it. like two parts. Anyway, I gave this a three on five. Um, oh. I, I thought it was an okay song. It's really like, I'm not going out of my way to listen to it. It's very calm it's already. It's kind of like nice and whatnot. It's not that there's anything really wrong with it. It's just I know that the Khaled part in the middle would bother me, and I don't really care if that's his thing, if that's what he's supposed to do. I feel like it was just so offsetting, but it's just the way he talks about his son. It's so weird. It's okay, but it's weird. Otherwise, it was okay. It was just really like a gradual build in. I, I was, it wasn't the most like pumping intro, but for an album called Grateful, it made sense. Fairly, I'd give it a three on five. Fair enough. I actually gave it a four on five. I I liked it. I the only reason why I didn't get a five on five because I know because it was close. 
um, was because he did put his verse, he did put his, his speech in the middle, and he chopped it up into two parts, which I was like, just put it at the end. And whatever they did for the high pitch for Sizzla, well, I was All just right, a little... That too. Uh, that, that, that was it. But other than that, the message itself, I would listen to this song. I can I can get past Khaled's message and, like, go through the song and listen to it and, like, feel great, you know? Just be like, look, I got where I am today. I'm still here. I'm still alive. I'm still, you know, healthy, all that shit. I, it's, it's, a, it's a good song to get you in the mood. For the intro track, so, yeah. it is what it is. It's, it's a... He's grateful. So what I'm trying to say with my three is that this song really isn't shining. It's Beyonce. How do you feel about Beyonce? I'm not a... I don't have anything against her. I just don't like her music generally. It's not really my cup of tea. Um, I get that everyone and their brother fucking thinks she's the greatest singer. And don't get me wrong. She kills it when it comes to the singing on this track. It's just, man, I could live without her. This whole song is about how they win all the time. But you know what? You know what? They, shining. We looked it up, and they're the most richest couple in the oh, world. Oh, shit. They're so, the like, you know couple. what? As, as given with that information, well, I on. feel like they both hold are allowed on, to on. say what they wanted they're to say. They're not the richest couple in the world. They're the richest couple maybe in hip-hop and music. Okay. But, yeah, no, I get that. But on that note, you know how I feel about songs that are nothing more than going on about being rich. It's like, okay. Well, welcome to a DJ Khaled Grateful album. Apparently. And okay. look, Beyonce has a great control. Like when, when Rihanna does shit like that, I don't really like it. But when Beyonce did it, like she had power. And then Jay-Z comes in and does his things. And the Diana Warwick sample they're using that they're cutting in so perfectly. I really appreciated the construction of this song. I could not care less about the subject matter of this song. And I know that's not the point. I know that I'm supposed to be getting drunk and getting like white girl wastedness and bopping <laughs> off to Beyonce and Jay-Z's latest single in the club. And that's the intended atmosphere for it. But this is not artistic brilliance. This is just Jay-Z and Beyonce on a DJ Khaled album. From his end of it, it's... I got Jay-Z and fucking Beyonce, because from what I could tell, Beyonce doesn't do a lot of these. And then from their end, I guess they just like DJ Khaled or something. I don't know. I don't think either of them really tried that hard. They just did what they do. Cookie cuttered that shit and walked out. And I gave this a four on five. It's a really fun song, but there's nothing new about this. Nothing over the top or interesting beyond Jay-Z being Jay-Z, Beyonce being Beyonce, that beat being good, and then really, where's the genius, you know? I think, I find, when I listen to it, okay, so first off, I gave it a five on five. I thought it was a okay. really, really great track. <laughs> really great track. Um, I like how they went to Shining and replaced that with the, they replaced Balling with Shining. That was cool. That's how I took it. Um, but initially, I liked how, one, they got Jay-Z and Beyonce together. Two, not, not like it's hard. I'm not trying to say like it's hard. It's just, I've never really seen that since back right no that that's why it's from Khaled's point of view an accomplishment right so with that when you listen when I listened to the verses and I was reading the lyrics I just felt like they were being like they were being themselves not even cookie cutter they were just like yo I had I, I had one kid I had ate another kid I did this like I did that like it was kind of honest yes it was that it was that like I'm cocky in your face poppy type Beyonce is doing that whole like da 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 type shit yes but I feel like it's like, yo, they can, though. They're not lying about what they're saying. That's you know what not, I mean? That's not the point, though. It's not about the honesty of the music. I, you didn't hear me going, they're full of shit. In right. fact, what I was saying is, hey, look, they're doing it again. I mean, by now, they've just they've been flossing that they're the shit for so long. And you know what? Maybe if I was them, I would be, too. And all the other things people say in these moments. But as a guy who hates this generally... It ain't impressing me much, per se. It's just I respect the talent in these artists. I definitely don't think that's Jay-Z's best verse. He's done so many better ones. I don't know enough about Beyonce to compare it to other stuff, but I thought it was really nice singing on her end. It's not the biggest, best beat ever. You know, like, how, I don't know how to give this a five. I get where you're coming from, though. All I'm trying to say is that these two always seem to take their life to the max. <laughs> Oh, yeah.
Uh, Drake. Hold up. Before I even talk about this song, I got a question. Hmm. Why the fuck is this not on Spotify in Canada? Like, I don't know if it's on Spotify in the States. I don't know if this is different experiences, but... Let us know in the comments below, please. But, like, for real, track three is Wild Thoughts on my Spotify list that to the max doesn't exist. Yet, according to Wikipedia, this shit's a single... Not even Wikipedia, even on Genius. Yeah, it's right there, and, like... It's a single, apparently. Well, it's a single. It's been like out. Like people single. have had pro, uh, people have had Facebook posts about it. People like I've I've seen when he went when he went. Uh, I I talk gray. I don't keep it white and black. I was like, oh my god, it's this song. Right, sure. Um, <clears throat> but all I'm trying to say is, where the fuck is it? Why isn't it on the album? A little confusing. Um, on that note, what a beat! Like when I heard this, my brain went alive. Like this is yep. so nice. Now, for me, I literally heard this at the end of the album. I'd already listened to everything else. So just imagine if you've listened to the whole thing, how excited I might be to hear something so fucking fresh as this beat when it came on. Right. And then Drake, man, he's barely there. No, I, I get it. And it's nothing against Drake. I like the song. Um, It was a really great song. I just, I like what he did. I can't. I can't say I like him because I don't like Drake for some He's reason. Not like Drake at all. I don't like Drake. If you saw the Drake album review, you'll he see. He only I, gave good marks to the songs without Drake. <laughs> if I, yeah. Anyway, he did well on this song. He kept up with the pace. He kept up with the flow. I liked it. It was great. Barely was on the song. Barely was on the song. So I was also kind of like hidden in the background. What, what is going on? There wasn't really much to the song and. And to be fair, it was really overplayed by the time I heard it because I've already heard Never this. Never heard it before, ever for me. But it was a terrible song in terms of content, just Drake getting fucked up with a girl again and how they went hard and nothing's clear. And it's like, dude, come on. Right. Come up with something new. Right. Please. Right. Please. But um, I love the beat. I love the beat so fucking much. No, the beat so is great. And I feel like Drake has blended so well into it that I could tune him out and pull a Damon and never really listen to him. And this is a proper fucking four. I enjoyed this song. And if it was on Spotify, I probably would have plussed it because I can see myself dancing in my chair at work to this shit. So good. Nice, nice. I also gave it a four out of five. I, it is a good song. It's a really great song. I see why it's bumping in the clubs. I see why people like it. It's catchy. The hook is great. The chorus is fun. I guess I like it because Drake's not really in it. But it's not getting a five from me. Fair, fair enough. Um... All right, I think we can migrate on to our track three up here in Canada or Quebec, and it's uh, Wild Thoughts. I hope you know my father's taking. You know this cookie's for the bag. I don't really like Rihanna that much. I mean, I know she's got everybody who loves her, but this is such a lazy fucking performance to me. Like, she's not trying. She's not really saying much. She barely made it sexy. She just has some wild thoughts. And who the fuck is this Bryson Tiller guy? <laughs> so, Bryson Tiller's been around for the last, like, I'd say two years. I've been hearing about him. Um, cool dude. Makes He's kind of like a singer-type thing. Singer-type, rapper-type person. And it was really funny, because when I was listening to this song, I kind of got this whole Chris Brown, Rihanna feel going. And I'm just like, well, this is, this is ironic, or whatever you want to call it. But um, it's a simple song. Guy wants to fuck girl. Girl wants to fuck guy. They're at a club. They're drinking. They're partying. They're having a great old time. And they just want to have... And they have all these wild thoughts. There's not much to it. And you're right. Rihanna wasn't really put an effort into this. And then the Santana riff uh, that was used in the sample was actually kind of cool. I like that part. It wasn't bad at that really. It's a change from what generally he uses, I find. But, but um, um, Bryce and Taylor sucked. Like, it's not that he sucked, okay? I'm certain... First of all, there's nothing that like stands out about this dude that like, he's. But that's him. Like that's Bryson Tiller. He's very like smooth, calm, so mode, like not standing out because he sounds like a bunch of other dudes. Like I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like I, if I heard this dude come on, I never could have identified him. Like it, never. And then like, and if I heard him on another song, I still wouldn't know it's him. He has nothing distinct. His rhymes weren't like really great. It was they were just, very simple. It was like. Hey, we we want to boost this guy's career. Yo, Riri, come. We're going to put you on with him. Riri's like, okay, fine. I'm not going to try very hard. 
and Khaled had this beat, and then they made the video. So this is a video. Beyonce song doesn't have a video, probably because they couldn't get them to do the video. <laughs> they have, but this has the video, and Riri's just dancing around and wherever the. She fuck looks good. Are. She looks sure. good. She doesn't make the video super sexy. But, but she looks good. But you know what? Rihanna's got this weird sex appeal to her, though. Like, she's got sure. this... I don't get it. I don't know. I, I, I see it. I'm not into it, but I see it. Like, I, I know people who kind of... Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. I, I just... Whatever. This is not, like, to me, the coolest fucking song on the album so far. I gave this a three. I, I get that it's supposed to be, but I kind of feel like, so far... What this album is, is a lot of songs that are supposed to be things as opposed to songs with any real sustenance or soul so far. So it's everything Rihanna's supposed to be. I bet it's everything Mr. Tiller's supposed to be. Uh, the beat's there, but eh, no life so far. No, like, really ground-moving, interesting shit for me. So good if I'm drunk. Otherwise, I don't really want it. No, nope, fair enough. I, I actually gave it a four. I like the beat. I like the Julia, uh, the Santana's riff. Um, I like the sample. I just like the vibe to it. I like how she says wild thoughts. I really do like that. I could do without the video, to be honest. But other than that, it's just for me, it's just a very catchy song. And even though Bryson Tiller kind of sucked, I was still kind of just like, eh, A for effort, buddy. A for effort. All right, fair enough. Let's talk about that classic single, I'm the One. When we pull up, brr, brr, all angle. Yeah, you're looking at the truth, the money never lies. Love. I'm this. a fucking believer. Even more so after Justin's fucking great. You know, he looks like song. Eminem. I think he's totally trying to look like Eminem, yeah. Like, I just, really. I realized that. I was like sitting at my house watching this video, and I'm like, but why like do you. Why? Be what Eminem. It's not real Eminem. It's some, whatever. So Eminem light, but he he really sounds great and he really kills it and he really like fits this chorus right and like you know what I don't hate the premise fine he's the one he's the gun that's going the girl should go home with and he fucking kills it he I, does a good job I'll like, I'll give it to you. he does a good job that beat just is the perfect summer jam it feels so good I could just picture girls in bikinis walking well we down know the Khaled's son is the executive producer who picked the beat absolutely because Khaled's son knows what his dad likes yep yep um yep. and then Quavo comes on Quavo and I don't hate it at all I have very little no. bad to say about Quavo he's Weirdly the only enough. one that made a verse now okay let's let's just say it here Chance the rapper's got a really Chance interesting the verse, verse we'll, is fine. But Quavo's yeah. verse is just really sweet, almost like he. Just well, it's, wants he's to be talking with this about girl. the girl that has been with him since day one, and I mean that's what the song's about. Like, no, it's... no, 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 no. The song's about how he's the one. Right. Like, you're, you're right. Assuming but like this connotation. See, no, then no. See, look at look, no, 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 no. Look at how no, no. Look at how Justin Bieber turned around and go. Like, Justin Bieber's putting on this persona where it's. I'm the re I'm the one that you should be going home with. Now, in Quavo's sense, it's like I'm yes. the one you're coming home with, right. regardless, right? So they your, still your, match. Your point was that the song is about being down from day one. No, 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 no. Okay. The song is about how he's the shit. So Quavo's the shit means that I've been down from day one ish thing. I think it's more just sweetness. Then Chance is like, I'll be your sugar daddy. And that's the that's his verse. He's just like fuck it. It's you not even about being this shit. It's like he's willingly like, oh okay, fine. That Here is, you go. That's exactly what it is to be a sugar daddy. He's like, you don't have a table, I'll buy you a table. Suck my dick. And I was like, man, chance, you were just fucking blatant with it. All right. Then there's Lil <laughs> Wayne. That okay, so can you consider his relationship like love, like? I don't think Lil Wayne has feelings and like this guy's fucked up, man. It doesn't make sense. He's like, you annoy me. I'll beat you like I'm fucking Bobby and Whitney. Like we're fucked up. Like when you do Molly, <laughs> you know, I just want to stay. I just want to stay. I don't want to kill anyone. I just want to ask this question: If anybody knows the why, Lil Wayne and Quavo both use the Bonnie and Clyde reference in this, in this. In this song, well, please let me Wayne's know. Well, I think Wayne's trying to be clever and be like, yeah, not like that. We're like, uh, like right, but, but Wayne, so, you know but so, saying? but so is Quavo. Quavo turned around. I, I, I'm just making this a thing because well, I just, was, I was Quavo, curious. Quavo made a clever pun, right? Because it's Bonnie and Clyde. Where at the end they get shot, but he follows it up with the line where, and it cleverly, 
they take pictures of us from all angles. Right. right? Right, Clever. It makes but sense. That, but that little way turns around, it goes Clyde and Bonnie, like Whitney and Bobby. It's like, why are you? I'm just trying to figure out so why like you're using the Wayne same line. Wayne is saying, as uh, they're like that, but we're like this. It makes total sense. It's just what Wayne is doing with it is so weird. It's just so. I don't understand how this guy is as happy. And then, as and, he then and then he talks about. Okay, I just I have to say this, and it's like, and then he talks about when his girl's on Molly, she's like a zombie. Yeah. But then I'm like, but you preach about giving girls Molly. I don't, I don't know, man. Wayne's verse is just whack it, and then he's just he's just not good. It's I didn't like that, but I give the song a four because it's really strong. And honestly, I don't care what you say about Chance. I thought that verse was solid. No, thought, no, like, fair. I was great. just I just felt a it, little bit really like just Wayne's verse. That's kind of hard. And had Wayne's not verse been in this song at all, maybe even giving Justin a chance. Fuck it. I would have rather heard Justin rap. It would have been better. As much as I'm talking shit, this is a little this might be hypocritical. Call me, hit me up on the on the comments, let me know what it is, but I gave it a five on five. It is it's a fucking amazing track. For, for once you take out the lyrics and you just hear the voices, I get it why Lil Wayne's on the fucking track. I understand his voice is is just to a point. I don't now. get why he's on the track. He's useless these days. Just to have that voice with T the Wayne. beat and just, T just Wayne to have... wasn't that good. I don't know. Anyway. Fuck it. Five. I'm trying to say is Lil Wayne should not be on everything. Chasing a honey million, baby, my natural ambition. Boss. Oh my Lord. Um, so this is another single with another video. And they're just kind of around some ruins, bopping around. There was not a lot of creativity to these videos. It's not there. You know what? There's never really a lot of creativity to a lot of the DJ Khaled have videos. Have you I have to seen admit. the three and a half minute intro to fucking Nas's album, Nas's song done or whatever? DJ Khaled can go over the fucking top in a video. I would disagree with you. Okay. But this one sucked. It was kind of boring. Now we were we were having a little bit of a, a disagreement here. See, there's a name that kept appearing on this album that I just was not happy about. Straight up. So I'm okay with Rick <clears throat> Ross. I don't really like him, but I don't really. You know what? You know what? Him. Hold on. Before we get into this, I just because you brought up Rick Ross, I don't really like Rick Ross either. But his flow was on point, and compared and he was to rhyming. Else. No, compared to the album we reviewed a couple fuck. That shows ago. His album wasn't that bad. <clears throat> I'm not saying it was bad. I just don't like Rick Ross. I it never really just kind of on this verse. Like I was album. like, okay, you know what? That's off sure. to you, buddy. Here you go. I, I'm okay with Big Sean, but you know who <clears throat> I don't like? I don't like fucking Travis Scott. You, my friend, have this problems. Guy, this guy. What did you hear the chorus? The first part is fucking future, and then he metamorphosizes into Fetty Wap. That's why like, he's so cool. He can, he's talented no and he's versatile. He's just boring. I hated the whole chorus. Then there was Rick Ross, which was okay. Then I hated the whole, <laughs> whole chorus because it was long. It's not like the, the chorus is twice as long as fucking Rick Ross's verse practically. Well, it's not my fault. Rick Ross doesn't know my fucking right of. It's not that. And then Big Sean comes in and does this thing. But I feel like, again, Big Sean didn't try that hard. It kind of sounded really? like... Really? I felt Big Sean was making more of a statement about, like, but how I, he's just trying to do himself. Listen, I decided. This is basically, like, a verse that didn't make I Well, decided. yeah, nothing's really changed since he's dropped well, the fucking I mean album. Is, it sounds like a B-side verse to I Decided. Like, it just wasn't good enough to make it. So, hey... But, okay, wait, wait. Hold on. on. I Decided is the album. Which track on I Decided? Like, there's Any the of them. It didn't make the album. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't good enough to make that album, so we gave it to Khaled. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's how okay. I felt about this verse. All right. All right. Look, it's not that great of a song, man. It's just what they're they're rapping about how great they are. Lil fair Sean enough. Works fair enough. But look, like I said, like I said in the beginning, Rick I did Ross I did grade every song as an individual track, and now I graded this as a Rick Ross, Travis Scott, and what, I forget his name. Big Sean. There we go. Rick Ross, Travis Scott, and Big Sean's uh, track, and to be real, it's lukewarm. It's not that good of a song. It's an okay track. It's a three on five. This is not a fucking end of the like. I don't understand how this is the single. There are better songs than this on the album. I I don't understand. I don't. I think it's get marketing. It. I think it's marketing. Travis Scott has been popping recently. I mean, Rick Ross is not really in the news as much, and uh, Big Sean. Well, you know, Big Sean's just chilling. Anyway, I gave this a four and five. 
It yeah, was I, I really, really like this song. I like the flow on it. I like what they're saying. I like how they're saying it. Rick Ross is always Rick Ross, so that's why I can't really change it. But Big Sean actually amazed me with his verse. And I was like, you know what? You're actually saying some real shit. You're not really... What I'm saying is he didn't say anything new. He's just regurgitating. Like, it's like I've said about the whole album. So far, every song is like each person is doing their own cookie-cutter verse. Just like Travis mm. Scott. Now, the real problem with that comes in, like, other songs. So, look, I think we should go talk about the next blah, the next one. The next one, It's Secured, featuring Travis fucking Scott. And Nas. I was so excited when I saw Nas was on this Right, album. right. I'm so unhappy right now. Why, why? First of all. I have this problem with rappers saying grandiose shit like I can spot you a hundred million and their net worth is fifty million. So when your net worth is fifty million, chances are you can't lend somebody twice your net worth, right? Now you might have access to people with that money, but then it's not really used but like I get it. They're just glorifying how fucking rich they are. But like that's all this song is and I know that Khaled's all about securing the bag and taking the money. But really, there was nothing to it. Like, Nas ripped it properly, had all of his flows, but it's really like... But I felt like Nas... Hold on. I felt like Nas was talking about, like, first verse is where he is now. Second verse is how he right, kind of came so, up. As I just said, he's a little full of shit, is what I'm describing, because he can't spot you $100 million. Look, he didn't have to say that. He could have just said, I spend money for all this decade. Blah, 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 blah. But don't say shit that's just ridiculous. Don't be like... I'm beyond my means. We'll get there again on another track. But, like, for real, it was just technically proficient. It wasn't interesting. I don't want to hear Nas rapping about how he has all the fucking money. It's boring. And then the second verse was a little bit about how the other rappers, what, should learn from him and blow money. Like, I don't understand. What lesson are you teaching, man? You're supposed to be, like... Well, no, wise no, poet fuckers. it's it's in a way they're trying to say like they're 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 secure enough to be able to do what they're talking about. So when they're like, yo, go blow a go blow money, at least make sure that you're secure enough to be blowing the cash out. It's not really a great message, but I mean, the concept of just making sure you're stable is what's more important, I guess. So I, let me give you some advice. Don't be stable by blowing 100 million on useless shit. All right, I'm gonna go do that on Tuesdays. No, for real, like, I did not, I was so disillusioned with Nas in this, so it's so disappointing. I have this a three. I, I'm not, like, it's not a bad song, it's just a boring fucking song. And that chorus doesn't end. Holy shit, Travis Scott, it's like, shut the fuck up, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, all right, we're already in the second half of, like, it's like, it's like 16 fucking bars, these choruses, man. It's like half the fucking song. Welcome to the new age. The new age. Straight Look. up. No, listen. I like the song. I like Travis Scott. I like what they're doing with it now. I like the... You know what? If, if they were a little bit more clear, it would be better. I gave this a 4 you on 5. like these long-ass choruses where you get less rapping as a result of it. Well, to be real, I mean, if, if nowadays rappers are going to put a bunch of crazy punchlines and a bunch Naz. of... Right. Hold on. Hold on. If we're take take like the modern sound now, if all these rappers are gonna be putting like these hard punchlines all in like quick short bars, bro, I, make a short verse, have all your crazy insane punchlines, make a chorus. If you need a three minute song, well here you go. Like that I get it, it's Nas, but if Nas terrible. decided to do that, but like that sounds absolutely fucking terrible. So what you're saying is, stop rapping and make more shit. I, I don't understand how you can support that. I just really like the song. I really liked how Nas, fl chorus. Nas flowed on it. I really liked how everything you, went. The chorus is terrible. You just don't like Travis Scott. No, I think that the entire chorus was shit. It was so long. It was twice as long as it needed to be. And he doesn't even try hard by the end. He's not even saying anything substantial. Okay. It's repetitious, weak bullshit. I can agree with that. I, I mean, will agree with that. It shows the limited range of Travis Scott. It shows that this guy isn't that good. He more or less can be that like token future chorus guy. Hey, he costs less than future. Let's get him. That's what I picture the conversation is. Like, we can't get future. Let's get Travis. Okay. I see that. I, I don't know. It's no, no. I, I see that. I see that. I, I don't know. I have nothing more on this one. Let, let's go on to interlude. Hallelujah. Oh, for real. God bless me. Lord. 
this was a fantastic little piece uh betty white right white I'm not sure which one my bad her voice is amazing this is just 52 seconds of pure vocal power pure lyrics mad dopeness i think it's one of the most perfect things on this album i give it a straight five i actually gave it a four on five only because it was too short i was expecting to be a little longer once i started hearing it she has she's oh. old as fuck bro right right like i know i know it i'm being chuck, selfish it chuck berry like 20 fucking I'm being years selfish. Like I'll admit it. I'll admit it. I just maybe just a little bit longer have a little bit more of her beautiful voice. That was it. That was nah, it. No, it, was, it was a really proper little interlude. And especially with all the crap we just heard before, which I wasn't such a big fan of the last two tracks, really. It's definitely a change. It was, it was a huge pickup and almost like it changes the tone of the album a bit, I guess. So I don't know. Let's talk about Nobody. I saw that Nicki Minaj was on this. What I was expecting was Alicia Keys to come in and do some shit, and then Nicki to come in and just ruin the song. Like, you know, it happens a lot when Nicki doesn't care. Instead, the sample fucking track is amazing. Alicia Keys sounds fantastic yes. talking about how, yes. like, honestly, like nobody believed in her. She came from where she shouldn't have been, has accomplished all this. Then Nicki fucking killed it. It was like, wow, that is one hell of a powerful verse hell of a strong message coming in she has that vicious i'm gonna take over this shit voice not her weird fucked up voice no she was on her game she's, here. she's on it she's getting she's getting her point across in a way where people are going to listen and take her seriously and i have to say this is one of the only times in my life that i've ever said i'm sad there wasn't more Nicki minaj on this song I mean, yeah. I look. I've always liked. I know that I've I've sh I've talked shit about Nikki before, and I'll admit it. And I've kind of like you know danked on her, but I've always deep down liked it when she did her deep voice rapping seriousness. Well, that's not what I thought you meant by deep voice. But yeah, no, this was good, and Alicia was good too. And this song expressed a lot of greatness. And I I have to say it's a four on five. It's not like the perfect really? track. It's not perfect to me. I I did plus it. I could bump this a lot, but like it's not over the top next level. It does have more depth to it than let's say most tracks on this album, but I'm gonna give that to Alicia Keys. But then it's like, it's a lot of an R&B kind of slower ballad song. And I liked Alicia on the chorus, but Alicia's verse was not as good as like, I would have, I wanted more Nicki. And okay. Maybe again, it's just what I wanted out of the song, but I did enjoy it. I did think it's powerful and I could listen to this a whole bunch. Well, to be fair, I actually thought it was a really great song. I liked, I liked hearing Alicia Keys on even her verse. I thought it was well made, well constructed. Um, a little bit less power than the chorus, but I think that was part of the point. I felt like she wanted to be a little bit, sound like a little weakened or broken when she was doing her verse. Um, Nikki, well, I, I, we already just said it. She just went in and fucking took over. Like, it was it was ready to go. So, I personally gave it a 5 on 5. I thought it was a really, really fucking great track. And you know what? If you get a chance, go look it up and, and just check it out. Like... This one's definitely worth it. And I would say a lot you know, of... You know what it is? But you know what it is? It's because it's two people for me. It, it, one is Alicia Keys, which is, like, far over there. And the other one's Nikki, which is, like, far over there for me. And they do blend well. Look, of all the albums so far, <clears throat> this is the best song, in my opinion. This is the best song we've heard. It, it, okay, the Drake song is the best beat. This is the best song. That, that's how I'd say so far. Fair enough. Um, and, yeah, so the next one is a very strange, strange song. I love you so much. Thank you. Bless. This was cute. This was annoying. It was DJ Khaled's love song to his son. Uh, thank you. I got that. Featuring Chance the Rapper helping along the way. Thank you. I got that. Featuring it was a cool little reference to uh, his song, We Taken Over, from 2007. And then, then there was the part with the alphabet. So Yo, that yep, when, yep. When you're playing this and you have your baby sitting there, it can be a little educational and yep, teach you yep. the alphabet. Smart, so, smart marketing. Yes, good job, um, DJ Khaled. The beat is really amazing and really cool. It really does go in. And Chance is all right. But, man, is it a lot of DJ Khaled ad-libs and Chance and talking This shit's stuff fucked up. And this shit's fucked up. I'm not even going to say it. I'm, I'm not even going to hide it. Like, we get it. 
I, I get it. Personally, like, I get it. The album's dedicated to your son. It's his resume. You love him. I, like, I get it. But you could have well, done... I don't agree with that assessment. This is more like DJ Khaled had a kid and, like, Eminem wrote Haley's song. All sorts of people write songs about their but kids. But at least there's lyrics. This yeah, is... But I love DJ Khaled's you. not a rapper. He's not a singer. He's a Then put a man. fucking message. Like... The message was <sighs> DJ Khaled. Okay, this song had a message. That DJ Khaled is feels like this is the greatest thing that has happened to him is this kid. Fair. And he wants to prepare his kid for greatness. Fair. And he's just being a great parent, in my opinion, or at least a normal parent. If you look at any parent, they, te- they treat their babies like kittens. I have colleagues who, who treat them like cats. And what what's different between the person in an office doing it and DJ Khaled? Money and the ability to, to do what he does. But really... That's normal, and I don't hate it. I give it a four. It's a really cute experience. It's positive. It's just not really a song I think I could listen to a lot. But if I did have a kid, I bet my perspective would change. Fair enough. I gave it a three on five. Um, It's not bad. It just wasn't all that good to me. I would have been okay with him actually just putting a fucking speech in the middle or something and, like, actually saying that. But just, just, I love you, I love you, I... I get it. And there was a lot more than just that. He had speeches in the middle. There was almost like three verses of speeches that were just DJ Khaled saying random shit, Matt. There was more lyrics to the Anyway. It, um, was, it was very neutral for me. So, yo, guess who's back on the Don't Quit track? Travis Scott. Fuck. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. God, I hated this. <laughs> I don't like Calvin Harris. I don't understand how this guy's all over Billboard. How he just touches stuff and it happens. I don't understand what makes it good. Often it's just repetitive nonsense. And this song was more repetitive nonsense to me. Like, the it was just boring. I, I don't care. You Internet. thought this was boring? I thought this I thought was this cute. Was terribly boring. It was your standard, boring, modern pop club song. Um, Travis Scott is not a guy who can carry a song, in my opinion. Jeremiah, Jeremy, whatever the dude's name is, he was great. He was about the only part of this song I liked. I did enjoy his verse, but this whole song is just I want to fuck a bitch and don't quit. You know? No, it's not about I want to fuck a bitch. It's about the girl that they are fucking is is they're guy. This song is about admiring the girl that they like or are infatuated with or sleeping with or whatever it is. They're admiring the person who's there for them. That, that's what this song's about. I give this a four on five because I really enjoyed the, the message that they're trying to say, at least what I comprehended from it, and how they, they all had their different ways. Granted, Travis Scott might be getting a little annoying on my end, but... Because he has no range. He's the same. He's the same on each of them. Right. Relax. But at the same time, I'm kind of just like, you know what? It's cool to have these guys have their own different flair. And it's kind of like I'm the one 2.0, basically. So just with right. different rappers. I'm the one with worse performers. Like, it's not good. It's a three Four on, on five. It's a three on five. The beat's okay. It's not next level. There really is no part of this song that stands out. And I bet this fades into oblivion. And even Calvin Harris is like, shit, that's not performing well enough. Let's go make another one. I don't like it. I don't think it's that great. I feel like it's so hard to hear what Travis Scott's saying. Jeremiah, whatever, that dude's verse was actually He's really very clear. Nice. Jeremy, Travis very, Scott, Jeremy, Jeremiah. I, I don't know. I'm, very not, clear. I'm not feeling it. I honestly feel the, the way about that guy right now, the way you feel about a lot of people and you just hate them blindly. It's like I'm almost like knowing he's on so many more songs on this album made me sad is all I'm trying to say. But in the meantime, I can't even fucking lie. All right? I just can't even fucking lie. What did you think of this? I thought it was very, very left to right. I couldn't get it, my head wrapped around it, to be honest with you. Um, fuck Future, first of all. He, I don't know what he's doing anymore. I don't know if he's on lean, off lean. No, but he's doing exactly the same thing as he does. Just like everyone else on this album so far. This is just him going on about his shit. I can't even lie. He says it a few times. And he's rich. He's got this. He can do that. Blah, blah, blah. He just brags and he brags and he brags. But honestly, I listen to his fucking album. He sounds depressed and miserable most of the time. I think he lies to himself. So I think he does lie. I don't believe him. And Nicki Minaj, 
I said I wanted more Nikki, but I did not mean this. <clears throat> it's just boring. Look, these people brag so fucking much that, like, it's not hype. None of these lyrics really are like, oh, that's clever. It's like, didn't Nikki rhyme well, the word you know, bitch with the word bitch with the word bitch? Listen, Nikki rhymed bitch, bitch almost 16 bitch, times in almost, the fucking verse. For real, it was almost a full 16 of her rhyming on that. Like, come on. This is just lazy, bad, bullshit rap. I, I, I am okay with, with the newer stuff. We reviewed a couple of the newer dudes. I'll review more newer guys. And if they have something about them, I'm okay with it. But I'd rather listen to like a Lil Uzi Vert be like, all my friends are dead, shoot me in the head. Because there was something there than this shit. Or that, fuck, I just I can't handle it. I can't handle this shit. The beat wasn't good. There's nothing to save this song. It's just long and boring. Two on five. Oh, the beat was good. That I guess is the reason it's not a one. Two on five, man. You 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 just sucked the words. Like you just reiterated the words that I was going to say about it's not a good track. I w I was poking fingers at him earlier and he was getting all like rambled up, but like this is a bad track. There's nothing to this song. I don't understand why it's here. Honestly, especially because this album is you know so why? fucking long. You know why? Because was... it's it's marketable, and some people out there are going to enjoy it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that there's somebody out there that thinks I just don't get it. No, I get what he's doing. I listened to his album. I didn't completely hate it. I hated this, though. Fuck this song. Fair enough. Anyway, I guess I can tell you that I hope Future is not down for life. So, guess who's back again? Offering more auto tune bullshit on the, the, the fucking second verse of this fucking song. Travis! It's fucking terrible, and he's just here, and it doesn't sound good. And then Future's also here. <laughs> And he's kind of doesn't sound good. Like he's, he's like sometimes future. It's cut. You know what? You know what? It's like future, auto tune, mumble, whatever, and then and then like not that lower either. future, which is like Travis now and uh, yeah, um, party next door. Whoever this is is okay. I don't hate what they do. Um, I've heard them on a couple other albums so far, and really, it's just party it's next okay door is one guy. Yeah, I know, but they're. It's all capitals. It makes it sound greater than it is. Hmm. But he's he's okay. I feel like he's what Travis Scott kind of wants to be a little bit. Okay. In general, I'm sitting here and I'm just kind of like, I don't really know what the point of why this song is here. It's long. Nobody says very much of interest. He uh, Rick Ross, he does that. He does that. He makes like these really long songs. Yeah, but Rick Ross is like like you were saying because this is the second time we hit start recording on this take. He, he's exactly the same verse as in the last but song. But Ross is always like that. shorter. No, we heard a whole Ross album. He has a few flows. And then Kodak Black comes in, and I've never really listened to Kodak Black, but that was kind of cool. I respected that verse. I like the beat, and I like Kodak Black's verse. Fair enough. And I like those two things. I, I, I would listen to more Kodak Black. There's something about his voice that he could probably say the same bullshit as all the other guys, but he does it in a cool way, and I respected it. Um, I give this another two on five though, cause it's just fucking not that interesting, not that good. I couldn't care who's down for life in this song, cause I don't want really anyone but Kodak to hang out with me here. Nice. Um, I actually gave it a three on five. I thought it was an okay track. Ross just sounds like the last verse, like I was saying earlier. Kodak, I've never heard him either, so really good at first impression. Good job on you, buddy. Hey, hey, hey. But um. I like Travis, so, like, I, I mean, I guess call me biased if you want, but I like him. I mean, I enjoy what he says. I like his voice. I like how he sounds, so he I can't... He says the same bullshit. Over right, over but again. so does, like, for me, like, personally for me, so does half of all these other fucking rappers. That's so, why like, us older folk hate all these rappers. They say bullshit. And the thing is, is if they didn't say bullshit, I wouldn't hate them. But guess what? Then they wouldn't have as many songs that all sounded the same. It's just Fair really enough. not good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to whoever out there loves this. But look, there are tons of these younger dudes who are popping off interest. Like, look, Lil Yachty managed to somehow not sound exactly the same the whole way through. Granted, there were many bad songs, but he kept it different for the most part. In, in this case, nah. This Travis Scott guy more or less sounds the same on each one of them so far. Fair enough. Fair enough. I don't know. 
I didn't realize that reviewing this album would just turn into me shitting on this guy, but it was so disappointing for me. Ah, guess what? Major bag alert! Great. Alert. I confess that I was a little bit singing along to it by the end of it, but this song kind of is not that good. It's yeah. not. It's not a great song. Okay, look, it's Amigos track, and if you guys, whoever's been following Amigos, hit us up below. Let us know if you have or not been. But you'll know what I mean when I say it's Amigos track. It doesn't sound like no. a DJ Khaled track. Didn't have enough ad libs, it, it, bro. Even at that, it, no, ad it did. It had enough ad libs. No. Their whole bag alert bad, bag bag like in the middle of the line like, no i'm talking about <sighs> like fucking my bitch she a thought 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 right that ad libs right but they don't them. have just that they do other type of creativity this is amigos track is and whoever repetition. really listens to amigos Look, will really Cuevo's enjoy this chorus is okay but fucking long i hate these long ass choruses and then offset was okay i don't have a problem with offset can't believe I know the Migos is at this point. And Takeoff sucked though. It's auto tune, fluffy bullshit. Like he doesn't even know how to rap a little bit. It's broken ass flow. Like he doesn't know how to rap a little bit. And I feel like the song was going for a four. It was okay, fine. Major bag alert, major key. What I get it. They're doing their thing. Migos is making their bullshit kind of whoopin music. Whoopin whoopin whoopin. You know, they're doing that thing they do, and then. Fucking takeoff just made my ears hurt for a minute with his fucking. Takeoff challenge. wasn't bad, man. Takeoff yes, never really was. hits up on the tracks. Takeoff wasn't bad. Relax. Maybe he doesn't hit up off on the tracks because he's bad compared to the other two. I mean, then again, I'm bad and bougie. Offset. Woo woo. I can't. I can't get past that. I can't. I don't woo, like these woo, fuckers. Woo, woo. Look, I don't understand. I, I understand that it's like okay party music, but like, it's such lazy shit to me. I'm not really that interested. I did give this a three on five because bag alert, major, major bag. bag alert. I, yeah, it's an earworm. Bag but alert, like, major this bag isn't like, alert. they know, they know, they know. It's not quite there. It's not even Versace, 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 Versace. It's not even that. It's just the DJ Khaled lesser version of Amigo song. It's not play with that pussy like Pikachu. Oh um, my god, it's play like that pussy like peekaboo. How the hell did you even fuck that up? Because somebody else had a Pikachu song. <laughs> my diamond's the Pikachu, Pikachu, Pikachu. I think it's fucking Young Thug or one of those guys. It's probably Little Yachty. No, I'm pretty sure it's Thugga. <coughs> or one of those dudes. A fucking internet, I don't care if I'm wrong on Oh, that maybe one. it's Gucci. He's in love with no, like Yellow Diamonds. Gucci. Either way, um, I don't know. Fucking three on five. Listen, I gave it a four on five. I... I I like Migos. It's not it's not fire. It's not super super lit as y'all would say. But I bet you super hot fire would trash this shit properly. Well, we should see. Wait six months and then there'll be a meme. Alright, anyway, let's talk about some good man. G Wagons are bulletproof. The ones before me got snatched like bullet tooth. Tony nigga. I think, I think it's really funny how these guys basically diss Migos in the song that comes right after Migos. Why did you get they dissed them? Does Migos like lean? No. No? They don't like lean? Not like, well, what do you, like, that's the thing, because, like, I know Juicy J sips lean daily. Like, that, that's, that's like he fake. lean. He's admitted that's not true. Okay. So, I didn't know he admitted no, it. No, but, My like, bad. I put, like, Migos in that trapping kind of drugged out fucking addict music. Well, like, I mean, I wouldn't right? question that do Migos do sip lean, get but, like. I a lot and get fucked up and party every day. Well, actually, as they said in an interview, they were strictly asked, do you, who smokes the most weed out of all you? And then Quavo just went, we don't smoke weed. So I don't think they smoke weed. Sure. I'm, I'm totally joking, by the way. They definitely smoke fucking weed. Okay, so basically, they're a bunch of, but they do harder shit for sure. Like these yeah, yeah, they probably up. sip lean. They probably like. So in this song, Pusha T basically <clears throat> comments that at the stores he shops for the fine shit, the guys who sip lean and shit just don't really go there because they're not even in the same tier of life. And then Jada Kiss is more like, man, everyone who's rapping these days is a fucking drug addict, and I'm like. That's really funny. I thought it was really funny because, like, fuck. Honestly, this song was real. This is what I fucking wanted, man. I liked it because it was real. I liked it because Jada Kiss was thick. You know what? A little bit, just because we did do the um, the Locks album, 
Uh, knowing that Jadakiss has kids and everything, I'm kind of just like, stop calling yourself a fucking criminal and call yourself a father. I don't. I think he's but just like, being real. No, but in the sense of being real, yes, all get all credit he's to you. He's not saying I'm a criminal like I'm out there committing crimes. He's saying right. more like I know I'm a criminal. And these guys who are pretending to be criminals copying their styles and shit is who they're they're attacking now granted right. migos from what i can tell isn't trying to be drug dealers they're more just trying to make dances and other goofy shit but that's well, not no, true they used to Cooking sell they... dope in a cock prop pot 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 okay no 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 they used to stay they they whip coke they whip crack like they they sell sure, drugs sure but i'm trying to say is that in general the 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 like the rawness of this track the Y'all are trying to be like what we we used to be, and it's not even like smart or anything. I appreciated this track. I gave it a straight five on five. I love the beat. I love the voices. I love the rapping. It was like the first fucking proper track on the album. Uh, I gave this a four on five. Uh, Pusha T really fucking took it home for me. I was like, yes, thank you. That is amazing. But Jada Kiss, I just oh, I love his voice. I think that's what it is. I don't like his voice. It's so good. It's I so don't grimy. like his his. I don't know. I gave it a four on five, but literally that's it. That's it. Like the, I, I even when I was writing it down, I was like, Holden might hate me when I write when I What's grade this. I hate? But it's like, just... I just I don't know. I really don't know exactly what it is about this song that's not perfect. It's just I like Pusha T, and and I have to say it might it, it must be Jay Kiss. Fucking major voice. bag alert. Bag alert. Like how can like they're like? But that's the thing is they're not even comparable. Like, Major Bag Alert is, like, this new age fluff music. And then Good Man shows you what real fucking hip-hop sounds like. I appreciate okay. that. I can see that. Okay. Anyway, like I said, five on five. I really thought it was a perfect fucking track. Um, next up, we have Mr. Fat Joe. We have Mr. Raekwon. We have Billy Ocean. They go bars to Billy Era. From the mud to the marble floors meets galore. Hustle in so when we reviewed Plato Oploma, I looked up You said Fat, that nicely, by the way. Fat Joe's fucking net worth and it's not a billion dollars. Shut the fuck up, Fat Joe. Stop trying to front like you're that rich. I get that you dream that you want to be that rich, that you want that Pablo money, dude. But the fact is you wrote a whole song making it sound like you really have made this billion. No, I, there are parts of it where you want that billion. Those parts, I'm not criticizing. I know you want that billion. Dude, he's, he's been on this for a minute. But you though. have not made that billion, dog. You just haven't. And I hate to break it to you, my man, but based on the fact that you keep rapping about how fucking rich you are and richer than you are, like, we already talked about it. Like, Jay-Z and Beyonce are a billion dollars. Are you really going to tell me that you're beating those two? Fuck off, Fat Joe. Raekwon, your shit was okay, but you're you're allowed to go on about the billion dollars thing because we know you you rapping like it's a movie and shit. But Fat Joe, dog, what the fuck? You sound like filler. It's like a hype track otherwise. Yeah, otherwise I don't even hype. know what to say anymore. You just have so much passion and you just take it away. I'm like, that's the that's how I feel. I that's how I, I feel. Hated Look that part. Stop. I hate it how a lot of these people are trying to say they're real but then they front like this and fat joe you used to be cool but nah, you're like you're not shit maybe not shit but like you his... keep running your mouth like this and you might <laughs> like Look, his flows were tight the actual premise of the song was okay it's really just the part that bothered me is i want the world to know fat joe's not worth that much money okay? i'm pretty sure hold it I'm pretty sure the world knows. 14-year-old kids might not know that shit. Yeah, 14-year-old kids will hit reality and they'll realize that he's not that much. The beat's nice, though. I give it a 4 on 5. I thought it was good. It had that kind of proper old crime type, rhymes, 90s-ish vibe to it. Yep. Yep. But Fat Joe's full of shit. I also gave it a 4 on 5. I really like hearing Ray Kwan on it. I actually didn't realize Ray Kwan was on, uh, like, before I heard him. I didn't realize he was on the song. I didn't see his name. Um, so it was really cool to have Ray Kron come in here swinging and punching. Like, it was really cool. Short verse, not too long. Um, but it was just, as Ray Kwan is, powerful. Again, we don't, hold it and I, I don't know if he understood it, but I didn't really get a lot of the metaphors. I'm starting to follow them. Right, right. So I didn't really get a lot of the metaphors, but it was really cool. Fat Joe, you did impress me on your skills and how you can rap on this. But full of shit, though, bro. Full of shit, man. Anyway, it's not at least, like... I don't want to listen to Fat Joe talking about pulling no more capers. 
the Amazon. She pissed me off. I just found out she got a panties on. Black coming in with a chorus that doesn't suck. Just saying, it's okay. Yeah, but then and we got Rick Ross coming in with a with no, a verse. Gucci's though. first. Uh, Gucci yeah, comes Gucci. in and does his thing, talks about Forget his who, thing. Who's on They're all pulling capers. Rick Ross talks in, does his shit. Wait, what are you doing here? Give me a second. I forgot who's on this. Who's on this? Gucci, Gucci and Kodak Black and Rick Ross. That's okay, right. No, it. so I was just early. Okay, cool. Sorry about and that, guys. And that's like fucking it. And it's it's boring. The beat's not that hype. It's kind of a, a lesser one. Gucci didn't bother me this time. Gucci was all right. Rick Ross was all right. Everyone was all right. But it wasn't top notch. It's like, okay, I guess you're out. You know what the problem I'm having is? It's like an eclectic fucking bag of songs. It's like in this type, you're the good guy. On this song, you're all committing crimes. It's like, it's so random. And But that's kind of what DJ Khaled's albums are. They're just a clusterfuck of different type of I vibes. I don't care. This song really felt weird to me. And look, in light of all of this, like Rick Ross was better on the other two songs. And right. Gucci was okay. Kodak... I mean, come on, he did that chorus, but, like, frankly, the whole premise of the song wasn't that great for me. I got nothing here. This shit was well, just like, kind of boring, Well, isn't the whole song about freeing Kodak Black? No, that was one line. Cause that was for, both lines. They both said it. Because he was technically in jail when this happened, and then he got out, like, not long thereafter, so... I don't know. I, Look, it's I not, didn't feel much for this song. I gave it a 3 out of 5. It's, there's not much to it. Gucci's good rapping. Again, Ross, you're on point, but... I give it a three as well. Cause There's not it's much to much, this. Again, a cookie cutter standard song. So for the people out there that love this shit, you're going to probably think this is a banger. But it's not really a banger. Because I bet if you go look at all three of these dudes and their albums, this is B-side shit. Everyone gave Khaled B-side shit. Nobody really tried that hard so far. Um, on that note... That Range Rover came with something. Slaps. Stings. Came with steps. steps. Hey, going up, nigga. I done ran this check up, nigga. Um, so here we are with Future. Bragging, and Yo Gotti. Bragging. Um, they're really, really fucking long verses. Um, Future's kind of going on about how everyone kind of copied him. How he's rich. How he's got all of this going on. And that two number one albums in a row. Not sort of, kind of. Kind of, nah. I mean, maybe technically for like a minute. Uh, yeah, Gotti comes on, doesn't add anything, just another his fucking flow keeps going. I don't hate this shit, right? I'm certain that it has its place. I'm certain there are people who are going to be like, yeah, these guys is fucking hype. They got bars for days and shit. But I don't really think they have bars for days. I think they have bars that happen to go on for days. And it's not <laughs> really like a good thing. It's more like... Is this the one where he spells shit? He starts off spelling everything? No, that's not it. Okay, because I want to... I don't think we're there yet. Oh, sorry. There was a lot of future on this album, so I got confused. A lot of future, a lot of Travis Scott. We're kind of getting mixed up. We're man. not at Travis Scott. Hopefully he's done. Um, in the meantime, it's like the beat's okay. It's kind of got a, a, a calm... Like, it fits. It's like everything it's supposed to be. But nothing truly over the top or interesting. It's like I don't know, man. I didn't feel much for this song. Future just went off, and I was like, "Oh, okay, cool." You use the name of the song once in your entire fucking verse, and then Yo Gotti never even used the name. And I was like, "Eh, okay, don't really care." But why call it something that is whatever? And to be real, I was I didn't get the point of it. I gave it a two on five. I was just like, "This, this well, means nothing." I gave it a three on five because. I was a little bit impressed at their ability to keep going that long, remain coherent. At least for a guy like Future, right? Because Future can kind of go left. Fair. It's, and like it technique isn't, wise, it, it's awesome. It's, but it's not. Well, I wouldn't go as far as awesome, but what I'm saying is, at least it was coherent. It wasn't like they just randomly said a bunch of shit. Like when um, Lil Uzi Vert goes from talking about the solemnness of losing his friends to I'm about to fuck your bitch. Right. Like, those types of things are weird to me. This one had more consistency, but I still give it a three on five because it's not surprising. It's like if I were to throw these two people and you were to guess what the song's about, it's a good chance you could have guessed what this song's about just by looking at the name and who's on it. And that's not really that impressive to me. Fair enough. You know what else isn't impressive? What? When you have iced out my arms. I got potato my homes. I got potato my homes. I put potato on my homes. This is a song. Like w welcome. This is this is actually something that was made. Um I know I've been sitting here defending Migos, but 
He may have broken me. I was There's shit on this song. So is 21 Savage. Future didn't really help. Uh, I'm a little iffy on on T.I. I'm kind of on the fence. T.I. was boring. T.I. had been doing a lot of interesting stuff lately. I feel like T.I. was like, I'm going to remind him that I'm the best Migos of them all. And then T.I. became Migos for a minute. And I'm like... Okay. Okay. Look, I get it. This is literally a song about how everyone's icy and how great they are. And I get that that's what they do. I just... (laughs) That's what they do. I still don't think it's a thing that's really worth doing. The beat isn't great. I got the SMR. I got the SMR. It's such a bland chorus. They all sound bored and fucking depressed, man. That was my thoughts on this. Everybody but T.I. sounds like they could be, like, fucking awful. Drugged out or just... they hate their lives and shit. And I'm like, man, y'all are making me not want to get icy shit. Like, I'm going to go to the thrift store like Malcolm Moore and buy a mink coat for two bucks or something. Because that sounds like a better idea than following these depressed fuckers. And have a big old, what is it, Paley Peck Why does 21 Peck? Savage just say random numbers as No, his 21, no, it's his name, 21. No, he also said 60 and a couple other things. It no, it, they're, they're like block codes or some shit like that, but the 21 <sighs> is something with him, like a 21. Yeah, sure. Savage, it's his thing. It's, it's a, Look, 21 Savage, and I've never listened to him. He impressed me with the first four fucking lines of this verse. Sure. Then the rest went to shit. And I just went... Look, at this point in the album, I'm like, I can't do any more of this shit. I really can't. I'm fucking frustrated with this type of music. It's totally not my cup of tea. This is a fucking two. I'll give it to you. It's not like the worst of the worst, but it's pretty fucking terrible. I don't give out twos that often. I'm not a fan of this. If the beat and the production had been worse, it would have been a straight one. No, straight up. I actually gave it a two as well. Um, It's not... I just want to turn it off. All right, well, you know what they say? Whatever. Guess what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you, before you, you keep that. It basically sounds like 2005, 2007 again. This, this is all I'm getting now. By the time, by this point in the album, I'm like, okay, so you don't have the same rappers or you're not affiliated with the same rappers you were back then, but you still have Wheezy, you still have Ross, and Ross is like all over this and then you replace some of the rappers you used to fuck with with like future and travis and then you threw i'm just like there's there's nothing new anymore there's there's no newness this here this song it's... sucked there was really bad young thug is shit his auto-tuning bullet look i've seen i've heard young thug a couple times that it young wasn't thug shit. Is... this was shit young thug it i need to head. know i need somebody one of you guys Please comment below. Let me know if Young Thug is gay or does he get pussy. I just need to know. Who cares about that? That's because I, I listen. There's so much. There's so much like com- like weirdness back and forth between his lyrics. I'm just confused, man. Nobody I just want to know. Who he fucks. If you care who he fucks, you're wasting your time thinking about the stupid shit. Fair Let's enough. focus on the important thing. He uses auto tune to a point where it's fucking annoying. And how are you gonna defend that? And so does fucking Little Yachty. I stated yeah, that. Yeah, but Little Yachty used it in an interesting, artistic way. Young Thug just fucking like sounds like he got high and threw shit together. Future doesn't help this song. Fucking Rick Ross again, same shit. And I, I thought maybe Two Chains could do it for me because sometimes Two, two Chains ch- actually had a nice no, verse. No, he didn't. It was so boring. It was so below. He's two got. Chains. A- it's like Two Chains has passed his prime now, and he can't recapture the magic of 2012, and his verses just don't have that. Well, energy. I did see an interview where he's thinking of maybe going back to like what he's uh, he's schooled in, he educated in, which makes sense. He's a smart guy, but honestly, this this song did nothing for me. It was like I was just saying I was tired of this shit. So whatever happened to be exactly more of this shit. Um, two on five. I I was hoping somebody here would be interesting. For me, at least, none of it really was. I don't care out there, internet, if you think this is some fantastic shit. This is not what any of those old Golden Age rappers had in mind for their future of hip-hop. Realistically, dude, the only reason why I gave this a 3 on 5 is because 2 Chains saved it for me. Um, oh, it was really nice to actually hear 2 Chains on this album. That's like, I know it sounds really fucking weird to, to, to be able to, to do it like this, but having 2 Chains on it, again, I, I... Nah. I graded them individually. Having two chains on this album made me give it a three. It it's saved it like for me. I, the beat was them nice. Individually, it shouldn't matter about the rest of the album. No, you're absolutely right. I still got a three. Fine. Anyway. Go fuck. 
All right, there's another interlude coming up. Which this, this is just. Talking numbers, you incoherent. Don't be embarrassed. I blame your parents. I like this one. This was different. This was like a refreshing fucking. It was like a little poem speech. Like Belly, Belly, like really, I f forgot about him. But Belly offering his like worldview on shit and describing stuff like his hustle, his grind, where he comes from. Him and Khaled are both, you know, from the same land. Everything kind of rolls through it all. And it's short. It's not quite as long because most of these tracks is pushing fucking four or five minutes. This one's only two minutes, 18 seconds. But it has that classic feel. It has that like open niceness right. to it. I really right. appreciated this. It was a great break. No, he was belly went really smooth on this track. Um, it wasn't too aggressive. Uh, he had a message. He's explaining the struggle. It, it was really nice. It was really nice. I gave this a four on five actually. Um, if there were, if they, I think that if they would have put a chorus in it and not make it full like a full on speech, I think I would have given it more. But I don't know, man, because this is more <laughs> of that like kind of open letter story type shit. Right? Okay. Okay. So I don't think a chorus would have enhanced this. Um, I like it. I think it was kind of exactly what it was meant to be. I kind of felt like it was a little confused, a little stream of consciousness. Like he just started going and whatever the fuck right, came out. And right. it, it didn't like follow the most linear path through it. But it was one of the more talented displays of actual talent in terms of the vocals on this album, at least from the rap side. And I appreciated it. I get four on five. I thought it was it was worth listening to. Maybe not something I'd go out of my way to find, but I'm okay with it for, you know, at least for this album, it's incredible. Nice. Nice. Um, not much really to say on it, to be honest with you. I mean... I guess uh, we can move on to the last real song on the album, Unchanging Love. I started to do so many things, but it was you, Mozart. I meant about like the all over the place nature of this album. You have like all these fucking gangsters talking all this shit, and then this Mabado person coming in singing a love song to God about how through wisdom and everything he's like appreciating the greatness. Like right back to like almost like I'm grateful part two, you know? Well like in a way I have to I have to say that all the rappers were kind of grateful for the life they had. As much as they were acting gangsterish about it, they're still in a way pleading that, you know, I'm kind of grateful to have these money, cars, and stuff like that. And it's not my fault that y'all are trying to fucking be mad at me in a way. Well, I could tell you Fat Joe just wanted more. He wasn't very appreciative at all. Right. But right. Um, no, this was different. This was like about God and just, you know, the humility of life and how as he gets older, he, it gets almost easier to accept and appreciate it. And he used to be young and foolish and more reckless with it. And it was just so like sweet and mature. And the guy sings it so nicely and it's so calm and like completely different than like a lot of this album has been so far. I appreciated the change. And I guess it's a really weird last song. It's not like the last track, I guess, but the last song on the album. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I I appreciate it a lot. I gave this one a four. I thought it was really well made. It had a great beat. It really just kind of sucks you in and drags you along in a good way and doesn't get old. No, straight up, Mavado did a really great job. He's got a really nice voice. Um, the beat does suck you in, and it and it kind of just makes you get trapped in this thought of like who's there when you need it, who you gonna who you gonna appreciate, who you gonna talk to, who, who do you, you gonna call? You know, who you gonna call? Ghostbusters. Like, yeah, they they definitely got your back, homie. But uh, no, really, this song is fucking amazing, and I suggest that everybody takes a moment to go listen to like, it. This is the kind of, like, the song on this album that I think you most can go show to Grandma. Yeah. And it would be, like, totally safe, and she'd be like, hey, look, DJ Khaled is not completely Well, I mean, whatever. you could probably show Grandma the last track on the album if she, you know, would have anything to say Maybe. About it. I don't know. Look, I, it was okay. I mean, at this point, fuck, most of this album's been played out. I'm, I'm a little... Like, it's, it's a long album, so I'm a little bit like, fuck this shit at this point. I kind of right. was ready to move on. Right. And there is one left, and I think we should talk about it. Get it? Talk about it. So, Assad talk. Thank you, Assad. This is a fucking waste of 16 seconds of my <laughs> life, if there ever was one. I, it's just Khaled, like, thank you for fucking producing the album. Yes, boy, yes, boy, yes, boy, yes, boy. I can't get it out of my head, and I picture him fucking jerking it and shit i know i'm not supposed to i know that's creepy and weird but the way he's going yes boy yes boy yes it's just so fucking weird it's not okay dj khaled that is a strange fucking thing i get this a one it was awful it was a terrible way to end this album it was creepy and i get what he was trying to do i don't like it 
to one zero. I mean, I want to I want to grade it. It's fucking weird. It's just like I thought he had this extremely written out speech, ready to dive into it and explain. It was Sixteen seconds. You didn't think there was a whole speech in sixteen seconds. I don't look at the time. I just I just read the, the titles. So I thought, and then all I heard was, "My son, thank you." I love you. Go boy, Whatever. go boy, go boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, boy. Yes, boy. Like it's like okay. And then it ends, and I'm like, okay, wait, what's next? Is there is there somebody's gonna come okay, in rapping? So, and so the first time it ended for me, what was next was DJ Khaled. All I do is win. Really? That, that's what came my great really? after because it was on. I got major key. I got major key a couple of times, but I think the first time I clicked like to the album. So it went to a random DJ Khaled song. And I was like, well, that's way better. Why didn't you end the album with All I Do Is Win? I'd listen to that again, and I'd probably give it a five or something because it would have been way better than this fucking piece of shit song. Anyway, we're kind of like trailing off. That's the end of this fucking album. No, dude, this was a long fucking track. 23 um, songs, 22 in Canadian Spotify. <laughs> only wait, only Canadian? I don't know. I'm just guessing. Uh, tell us if your Spotify has the Drake song, please. Tell us where you are, where you're located in. Well, based on the metrics, half of them are in the States, so probably in the States. All That's right, well, just guess. let us know. Maybe we'll drive down and say hi. He will. I don't know. I have nothing uh, to do with my life. Please on. invite me. So, so like, the album, it got a 3.2. Mine got a 3.9. Um, I liked a lot of the songs. because I did I, not. I like Migos, man. Look, if we look at it, there there are a couple of decent tracks on here. There are like no gems. There's like very little to really come to. If you are on the fence about this album, just don't listen to it. If you are really excited for it, go ahead. That's that would be my advice. Don't listen to just this don't if blame us fence. if you hate it. Well, you can blame Chris because he was really pushing some of these songs. Anyway, fuck it. That's the end of this. If you like it, like subscribe to the comment channel. below let us know what's and, up uh, you know do the whole thing the twitters the instagram the facebooks we got it all there you don't want to read it all you then, don't have uh, to it looks like next week jay-z's dropping an album so there's a good chance headspace gonna be talking about that so until the next time peace and all that shit